Welcome to this video where I describe how you can configure the PostgreSQL database with the Payara platform products. This video is part of the data sources video series, so have a look in the comment to a link to the other videos of this series. When you're interested in configuring the MySQL database or the Oracle database, have a look at one of those other videos. Also, using the data source with JPA or GDBC frameworks is described in the other videos. The optimal way for configuring the database is done with the asadmin command line tool. This is a scripted way, which means that you will not make as much errors as you do it manually with the admin console. The admin console, of course, has the advantage that you can learn things if you do the task for the first time. For Payara Micro, you can use the data source definition so that you can define it within your application yourself, the configuration of the database. But both options using the scripted way or the data source definition is possible with both Payara Server and Payara Micro. Let's have a look how you can configure the Postgres database with the admin console of Payara Server. I have here installed the Payara Server. It is the latest community version at this time, the version 2020.7. The server is also running, so the domain one is active as you can see here by the list domain commands of the asadmin tool and domain one is running so we can start with the configuration of the database first thing that we need to do is we need to add the jdbc driver for the postgres database to the payara installation the easiest way to do this is to use the add library option of the asadmin tool. It requires the location of the JDBC driver, the jar file, and then it can place that jar file at the correct location within your environment so that, it, that the driver can be picked up when your application or when the server needs it. So let's now then configure the driver. So within the admin console, we have a specific option for configuring JDBC connections. And first we need to define the connection pool. There is already one connection pool for the internal H2 database and one pool for the EGB timers. So we create a new connection pool. Let's give it the name Postgres pool. And we define the type of connection that we like to make. Here we can choose as the, sim, the, uh, the simple connection, uh, the data source of the Java X SQL namespace. We specify here the driver, then he picks up the correct GDBC driver that we added in the previous command. And then we can go to the next step of the wizard. There are a lot of options uh, to set for that pool, like minimum um, and maximum pool size. Um, not going into detail of all the options, you can have a look at the documentation that we have uh, around these um, parameters. But the main uh, point is, of course, that you have a lot of um, properties possible to define uh, your connection pool. Most of them um, have default values, so we do not need all of them. So we can just remove them. And we add the important one, uh, like server name, uh, where is our database located. Uh, for me, it is the local host. We define the port number uh, where the database is listening. By default for Postgres, this is 5432 as port number. We 
specify the database name that the driver needs to connect to it we are going to use the default database of postgres which is called postgres we also need to specify the username i did not create a specific username here for this demo so it is also postgres and then we as last value we need to specify the password i specified um, the password as value my secret password of course putting the password here plain visible is not a good option so it is recommended that you use the alias um, option to define the um, value of your password i will show you um, in a minute how you can define then this postgres password value uh, so that the actual value is uh, of the password is not visible but is encrypted within the environment but for now just put here the um, plain password uh, plain visible password and then we can finish our creation and we can check if the connection to the database succeeds and it is correct so that means that um, our configuration is correct that the database is accessible with the parameters that we have specified. The next thing that we need to do is define that GNDI name. Uh, the GNDI name that we need to specify if we are using JPA or the JDBC framework. This can be done here with that JDBC resources item. And we create a new entry there, for instance, uh, my local postgres as name and we link it with the correct pool uh, the pool that we created in the previous screen uh, the postgres pool and from now on we can use this jdbc slash my local underscore postgres as gndi name for our application then i can show you how you can define that password alias uh, we have here under the the main menu the password alias step and we can create here the uh, the name of the alias uh, for instance i used uh, earlier on the postgres um, password and then i can specify here the actual value and that value will then be encrypted within the system and this and thus not readable and does not show up in the screens um, as you saw earlier. Using the asadmin command line tool, of course, has the advantage that you can create a script and then you can automate and make the creation of your environment repeatable. So the same actions that I did with the console, uh, the graphical user interface, I can perform that with the following commands here in this, in this file. That seems a lot of commands and a lot of things that you need to remember, but you can always use the enable as admin recorder here on the right top of the UI to record all your actions that you do within the web console. And then you receive a similar script as the one that you see here and that you can adapt or just use as is for your environment. So let's go over the most important um, commands and aspects. Uh, first of all, you have that create GDBC connection pool command that creates uh, the pool. The pool um, needs to have the, GN, uh, the class name and uh, the, dat the data source class name. In this case, it is the one of the Postgres. Uh, we need to define the type of the connection, uh, which is just based on a simple data source. And then we give the pool a name. Uh, in this case, we call it again Postgres pool. Then we need to set those five properties that can be done using the set command of the asadmin tool, where we say that for the resources that connection pool uh, with a pool name that we have defined there in the previous step, that Postgres pool, we set properties like we set the server name, where the database is located, the port number, the database name, the user, and 
the password so the same five properties again we can put here um, that alias option which is of course uh, um, more suited than um, putting there as plain text uh, that the password so that it is hidden and that the password can be stored encrypted within the environment but for now just use that again that um, plain text password so if we execute those commands then the pool is created and properly configured I see he executes all those commands and also the last command is executed successfully that means that we can also try out to connect uh, to our database uh, from within Payara. so we launch the ping connection pool command and it says that it is executed successfully that means that all the configuration is done as it should be the last step is um, creating that GNDI name that can be done using the create JDBC resource command where we define for that pool that we have created at that Postgres pool that we define the GNDI name in this case GDBC slash local dash Postgres that GNDI name needs to be made available to the uh, cluster to the um, single instance or to the server itself so that's this last command and uh, the create resource ref command where we say that this gndi name is available on the server here uh, on the domain server itself for our example for the demo that i'm creating here so executing these last two commands and now everything is ready so that that connection that connection to postgres database can be used from within jpa and jdbc as you can um, see in the other videos in the second part of this demo i uh, can show you how you can use the data source definition feature of jakarta ee to define a configuration for the postgres database and how you can use it with the payara micro instance for instance I have here a simple demo application where I added the Jakarta EE dependency to the project. And then I have this annotation available, the add data source definition annotation, which allows me to define the configuration also for the Postgres database. We again specify the name of the database driver, uh, the PG simple data source here. And again, we need to specify those five properties uh, where the database is located and how we can connect to it. The option of using the plain password here is um, even less um, recommended, of course, because this is part of your source code, which means that if you put it in a source code repository, that the password will be visible. The allies option is also not usable here with um, Ayara micro so we make we are making use of the micro profile config option that we have also and so we specify here that the password needs to be read from a file which we will define later on we define the values password username and server name um, in this way if you do not like to use the annotation you can use the same option of creating a data source but then within the web xml file there you have the data source um, element and then you again need to define the same properties and you can also use uh, the same option of using microprofile config for the password um, etc and the last thing that we need to do um, is in the case here of that data source in WebXML, but also for the annotation, is that we need to find the GNDI name. But now we need to define it in um, another area of the GNDI tree, the global area. But for the rest, uh, we specify it is a JDBC um, object and we give it the name uh, local-postgres also in this case. 
when this is in place, we can um, package uh, our project. We can uh, with Maven, for instance, as, as in this case, we can do a Maven clean package. And then we have our WAR file available so that we can start it with Payara Micro. And we can do that with the, uh, the, the plain Java minus jar option uh, so that we can start Payara Micro and add the um, WAR file on the command line that needs to be executed. We need to sp specify a few um, parameters. Uh, one is the add libs here, the add library to add the jar file where the JDBC driver is located for the Postgres da database. We need to specify the file where the microprofile config properties are read, uh, in this case, the file microprofile.properties files with the minus minus system properties options. And then the last parameter is our WAR file. And if we look at that property files, then you see that we have there just uh, a, the classic property layout of a file uh, key value pairs with the keys used in our code and the values are the values required to connect to the database. In this video I explained how you can configure the connection to a Postgres database using the web console and the azadmin command line tools and I showed you also how you can use the data source definition for configuring the data source also, which can be used with Payara Micro uh, or both, as mentioned, both options are available in both products. As mentioned before, also have a look in the comment for a link to the other videos uh, for using it, uh, such a connection with JPA and JDBC, or if you are interested in another database, there are also the links um, available. Thank you for watching and hope to see you in one of the other videos. Bye.